Do you want to be able to do live presentations, webinars, and trainings inside your Facebook group, your Facebook page, or even on YouTube? Well, if so, I want to talk to you today about using a free webinar software called OBS, and this tutorial is going to take you through how to set up OBS and do the live trainings inside either Facebook or YouTube. So, are you ready? Hey entrepreneurs, it's Salma Jafri. I'm a video content strategist and you are in the right place if you want to grow your personal brand with video. Be sure to hit the red subscribe button and the bell icon next to it if you want to be the first to know when I upload a new video. I absolutely love doing live trainings both inside my Facebook group as well as on my YouTube channel. And one of the reasons that I love live trainings is because it connects me a little bit better to my audience and I want to be able to do both talking head live videos like this one, but I also want to be able to share my screen and share a presentation. So a little bit of webinar style, and I want to be able to mix the two and the software that I want to talk about today, OBS helps me to do that. So OBS stands for open broadcasting software. And I want to quickly run through some of the advantages of using this versus some of the other softwares that might be out there. So the biggest advantage of OBS is that it is absolutely free. It can run on your desktop, whether you're using a Mac operating system, a windows operating system, or a Linux operating system. So it's absolutely free. You don't need to purchase anything at all. No expensive webinar options, nothing. Now, the downside is that it is a little tricky to set up for the first time, but hopefully this video is going to help you do exactly that and simplify the entire process for you. So you can literally go step by step and use the steps that I'm going to talk about and set up OBS on your desktop. The other advantage to OBS is that it just makes you look professional. So it allows you to share your screen as well as yourself on camera, both simultaneously. So you can switch back and forth. You can do picture in picture. Um, and there are, it's built, there's so much functionality built into this that I'm actually not going to dive into each and everything it does, but I'm going to stick to the basics so that my aim is to just help you get started with doing live trainings with OBS. All right, so the first thing you wanna do is go to Google, type OBS, which is gonna take you to obsproject.com. And here you're gonna see three options. You can download for Windows, for Mac, and for Linux. All right, once you have downloaded, in this case, I'm working on a Mac, so I have downloaded OBS for Mac, so you just hit that and start OBS. All right, so I want to walk through some of the most important features that you see in OBS right now. So the most important thing are the two black screens that you see, one on the right and one on the left. Now, very quickly, I'm in studio mode right now, which means that this is my view. It is not the view that my audience is going to see. The right-hand side of the screen is for what your audience is going to see. The left-hand side is for what you are going to see. So you can line up stuff on the left-hand side. Okay, I'm going to show my audience this, and then I'm going to show them this, and then I'm going to show them this sequentially. And then you can have it all lined up on the left-hand side to be uh, made to go live on the right hand side. So that's what these two screens are for. The next thing I want to show you is the two boxes here called scenes and sources. All right. So the first thing that you want to do is add a scene and the scene that I want to add in is me on camera. So I'm going to click the plus icon here and enter the name of my scene. So I'm going to enter talking head industry jargon for when you have your face on screen. I'm going to click OK. OK, once we've added our talking head scene, we want to add a source for where this scene is going to be picked up from. And so we again click on the plus icon here and we say video capture device. And click OK. And we choose the device from this drop down menu and I'm going to choose my FaceTime camera. And there I am. Well, what's wrong with my hair? Okay. <laughs> okay, so that's basically, and then you just click OK. Yes, use presets. Uh, the screen resolution I'm going to leave on the default and click OK. All right. So now you can see that this is the first source and the first scene that I've added to OBS. And it's a bit off to the side, so I can just simply drag this corner here and make it full screen like so, so now I know that when I'm in talking head, this is what my audience is going to see on the right hand side. Okay. Now I want to load up my presentation on the left hand side. 
Okay, so here's a sample presentation that I made in Google Slide. And whether you've made a presentation in PowerPoint or Keynote or Google Slides, the process is kind of the same. So this is what you need to do next. Go to File and download each of these slides as a JPEG slide. Okay, as a JPEG image, sorry. So I've already downloaded the first three and I'm gonna show you with the, with the fourth one here. Just simply go to File, Download as JPEG image. And I have called this pr folder presentation. I'm gonna add 04.jpg to this. Okay, done. Now I'm gonna open this folder. Now this is the folder that has all the four slides that I wanna present using OBS. So what you wanna do is add in all the slides. So this process might take a while depending on how many slides you have. So if you have like 50 slides, then you know, do section off like 20 minutes or so to do this process because you do need to do every single slide one by one. All right, so once this process is done and I've got all the JPEGs in one folder, I'm gonna go back to OBS and I'm gonna add another scene here. I'm just simply gonna re-label uh, scene one here since it's already there. I'm gonna rename it as my presentation. Alrighty. Now what I wanna do is tell OBS what the source of this presentation is gonna be. So I'm gonna direct it to the folder that I just made. So I'm gonna go to sources, I'm gonna click plus, and I'm gonna say image slideshow, create new, Okay, all right, and from here, the first thing I wanna do is choose the slide mode as manual because I don't want the slideshow to autoplay, so I wanna be able to control how and where the slides move, okay? So that's uh, the reason for choosing manual, and I'm gonna show you how to use hotkeys to control the movement of the slides, so going back and going forward. Uh, I'm going to leave the visibility as uh, always play when not visible. This doesn't really matter with manual either way, transition fade. I'm going to leave all the default settings in. All right, now here is where you want to add your image file. So you're going to again go to plus, and instead of files, you're going to add the entire directory in one go. So you click add directory. And from here, you want to choose your folder where you made all of your, uh, you made your presentation JPEGs. So I'm going to click presentation, open. And there we go. I can preview my presentation has opened here. And I'm going to click OK. All right. So now what I can see is that I have two scenes that are set up now. One is my talking head. So when I'm on screen, I wanna show me on screen. And when I wanna show the presentation, that is all loaded up with the image slideshow. Now, what I wanna show you is how to add hotkeys to move the presentation back and forth. Okay, so to add hotkeys, you first go to settings here on the right-hand corner. And from the left-hand menu in OBS, you choose hotkeys and you scroll all the way down and you wanna make sure that you fill in next slide and previous slide. So for next slide, I typically wanna have the forward arrow, which is this. This is from my keyboard. I'll try and include a screenshot here. And for the previous slide, I wanna click the back arrow, which is this. And that's it, that's all you need to do. Click OK. And now your slides are all loaded up. Now I wanna test this whole thing and I also wanna show you how the screen transitions work. So what you see here is the word transition here, which means that I wanna make sure that when I want to transition between myself and my presentation, this is the button I need to hit. And I'm gonna just demo this for you here. So I hit transition and now this is what my audience is seeing right now. Now I'm gonna click the forward arrow on my keyboard and this presentation should move to the next slide. And there we go. And again, I'm gonna hit forward and there we go again. And so this presentation, I've only added four slides. so It's gonna come back to the original one after four. And so, and I, if I click back, again, right? So I can use the hotkeys to transition and to move the slideshow backwards and forwards. And I can use this transition button to 
control what the audience is seeing. So when I want them to see me on screen, I make sure that I'm on the right hand side of the screen. And when I want to show them the presentation, then I, I want to hit transition and make sure that the presentation is on the right hand side of the screen. Okay, so the next thing that I want to talk to you about is how to set a stream key. Now, stream key is a series of alphanumeric characters that Facebook is going to give you if you're doing a live on Facebook or YouTube is going to give you if you're doing a live on YouTube. And that, that is a stream key that you need to enter into OBS so that the connection is made. So Facebook to OBS connected or YouTube to OBS connected. So all the magic happens in the stream key. So I'm going to show you how to do that. All right, so for the stream key tutorial, we're gonna go into my Facebook group, Personal Branding with video here. And I'm going to schedule a live video. So I'm gonna click on live video. Okay, so what you see here is two buttons, camera and connect. Now, if I wanted to go live right now without being able to share my screen, without being able to use OBS, I would just hit go live and I would be live inside my Facebook group, but that's not what I wanna do. I wanna actually use OBS, so I'm gonna, click on this other button here called connect. All right, what this does is it connects your live stream to the live API so that you can use live streaming software or a hardware encoder. Now, what you wanna do is grab the stream key. And this is the stream key, which I've blurred out because if anybody gets your stream key, then they can go live on inside your Facebook group or inside your YouTube page or whatever. So you don't wanna make this information public and you wanna protect your stream key. But what you wanna do is copy and paste the stream key. So I'm gonna right click, copy. And now I wanna go back into OBS and paste this. So I go back into OBS and I wanna click on settings right here. And from settings, I go to stream on the left hand sidebar here. And from service, I choose Facebook live. So you can see a lot of, let me just show you, there are a lot of these services here. Um, and ones that I've used are YouTube and Facebook. So I'm gonna choose Facebook live and I'm going to paste the stream key in here. And then I'm gonna click okay. All right, now I have made the connection between Facebook Live and OBS. And if you wanna grab YouTube stream key, let me just quickly show you how to do that. So here I am inside my YouTube channels analytics and I wanna go on the left hand sidebar and click live streaming. Okay, and on this page, you wanna scroll all the way to the bottom to get your stream key. So it's right under this subheading called encoder setup and this is your stream key. So again, you just wanna be able to copy this and paste it inside OBS. But in this case, you're gonna choose settings and you're gonna to go to stream and you're gonna choose YouTube here and then paste the stream key here. So that's the only difference. All right, so a couple of other quick things that you need to know before you start live streaming using OBS is one, you wanna make sure that your audio is set up correctly. And the other thing you wanna make sure is where is this video gonna be saved? So let me show you both those things. So you go into settings and you click audio and you make sure that you have chosen the mic that you are gonna be using for your presentation, right? Once you've done that, then you go into output here and you choose the recording path. So this is the path where your final video uh, is going to stay, that's gonna be saved and then you can repurpose it or download it or whatever you wanna do with this. Okay, so now for the final step, which is to start streaming. And I just wanna do this live. So I'm actually just gonna go live inside my Facebook group and like do like a test real quick. Okay, so all you need to do now is that everything's set. You have your talking head, you have your presentation and everything's lined up and you are on screen right now. So remember, when you go live right now, you are gonna be on screen because you're on the right hand side of the screen, okay? And all you do is start streaming and there is gonna be a delay. It's gonna be about a 60 second delay before people are gonna be able to see you, okay? So keep that in mind and don't panic if you don't see yourself right away. I've also got my uh, phone onto my Facebook group so I can see when I go live and you'll also be able to see it inside OBS. So let's do this. Are you sure you want to start the stream? Yes. Now you wanna go back to your Facebook group here and this button, go live, is going to be dark blue and then you just hit this and you should be live. 
I'm just going to add a test title here. And there it goes, go live. And so I'm going to hit go live here. And it says fetching video stream. This can take a few seconds. And that's it. So now I am live. And so I'm going to go back into OBS here and show you guys what this is all about. So hi, guys. If you see me on live right now inside the Facebook group, I'm actually doing a, a tutorial video from my YouTube channel on how to go live inside Facebook groups using OBS. Oh, my God, that was a mouthful. But <laughs> that's what I wanted to show. And basically, I'm just showing people how to transition between screens and, you know, what's happening and how to use the whole thing. So I thought, you know, why not actually go live and show people? So if you notice here, my audience, Audio is muted on the desktop because I don't want to be able to hear myself while I'm actually speaking and also through the desktop again. So you want to be able to make sure that your audio is muted. That's always a good practice. And then I want to be able to see myself here on the phone. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in OBS and here is where I'm going to control everything from, right? So I'm controlling everything from here and I'm going to do the transition and I can, you know, go forward in this presentation or back. And then I'm going to come back to my, so this is my command center, right? But on the phone is where I can see the comments coming in. I can see who's watching live. I can respond to that. So it really pays to be able to use both your desktop as well as your phone to do this. So if you guys are watching on Facebook, this was a quick test about a video coming up today on my YouTube channel about how to go live in your Facebook group or your Facebook page or on YouTube using OBS. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to finish this test here if you were live watching me. That's the end of this live broadcast. See you on YouTube in a few minutes. And then you just click end live video and that's end there. Okay, and here you basically say stop streaming. Yes. So that's it. That was my entire OBS tutorial. And I hope that you saw how easy it was if you can just get these basics right. Now it's your turn. And I really want to know in the comments below, what kind of presentation or live training are you planning to do? And are you going to use OBS to do that either inside your Facebook group, your Facebook page, or on your YouTube channel? Tell me in the comments below. Remember to go after what you want and build a brand you love because you can be the media.